Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back uh, to the stream. We've got more NGS up tonight. We've got Moto versus University of Houston. Okay, and this is the last uh, match for me tonight, but it will not be the least for certain. Uh, Nexus Gaming Series Division A, University of Houston, is down towards the bottom, looking to pick up their first win. They're at one draw and three losses, and Moto in the middle with one win and two losses, looking to get another win and move up the rankings in Division A. Uh, I'm very excited for this match. We've got our first map here, Infernal Shrines, and it looks like both teams are ready to go, and we're going to go ahead and jump right in here. Infernal Shrines uh, being the pick uh, from Moto Gaming, and we're going to go ahead and start. Okay. And here we go into the draft here. Uh, Infernal Shrines. Uh, University of Houston is going to have the first pick. Here and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, looking for the first band here, and just like every band, you wonder: is it going to be the meta picks, or are we going to have uh, the uh, you know the off band? The first, uh, usually the first team uh, bands here. They usually get uh, either one of the top picks, or they go for an off band and say, hey, we want one of those uh, top meta picks, or they just decide to go their own direction altogether. I've had a couple casts tonight where people have done decidedly uh, their own thing. So uh, we're going to see what University of Houston goes with here. I'm going to give the music back in here. I forgot to turn on the uh, good old Infernal Shrines draft music here. The Blizzard Heroes of the Storm always being a very good soundtrack. Genji, the first band out, so there he goes. Uh, not an unpopular pick at all. Very many people... Oh, jeez, I'm dropping a lot of frames. What is happening? Uh, boy. Hmm, do I have a connection issue? At least it's not during the game, and I hope it does not keep up. So, uh... 
just sort of checking on, sorry, do, checking on some uh, technical stuff here. Hopefully, there we go. That was just a little small blip there. Uh, hopefully we should be good here. Uh, hovering the Hansa band, getting rid of the Shimeta brothers here right at the top. Probably discussing the rest of their picks. Making sure that really is the Hansa they want to get rid of. Hansa, of course, very good here. Uh, on the shrines themselves, and just sort of a good character overall, as we all have seen. So Hanzo banned out here, and we're going to go into the first part here. We're going to see if we're going to get that first pick, Lucio, the first pick, Grammy, and there's the ETC. I was going to say the next one. Uh, grabbing that good old gun guitar there, he's going to turn around and use as an axe, I suppose. Uh, and then so the two picks, so we're going to see if we're going to get the Grammy and Lucio here. Uh, from the side of Moto. I can see, of course, going something different. Uh, like Kerrigan, uh, I saw as a first pick from Macaroni and Cheese in my previous cast. We're going to see what they do here. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if they're just taking a long time to think about whether they really want to do something uh, classic or if they're debating what they want to go over, or if they're just looking to see what their next move is going to be after the first round here of Houston. It's always good to have that mental advantage. So Grammy and Stukov, they don't want to uh, Lucio here. They're going to go ahead and let University of Houston Lucio. So that says a little bit something about what Moto wants as far as they aren't concerned about sound barrier as much, uh, or they don't want to use it themselves and aren't really concerned about University of Houston getting it. So... Uh, Stukov also very good on this map. The point control offered by his silence is fantastic. And University of Houston here uh, could snap up the Lucio and probably um, a solid DPS of their own. They're going to go ahead and grab the Arthas, so immediately committing to the double tank here, ETC Arthas. Arthas, of course, being a very good solo laner, uh, and probably is, is going to go up there in the top lane and handle that, but... ETC Lucio Arthas opens up a lot of windows to uh, for everybody to follow up on stuns and CCs. Um, Arthas going to uh, very good to shut down the gray main, get his attack speed out of the way. Uh, out of the out of the way, turn down. Just turn turn that attack speed down. Take it, take the knob, turn it turn it down. Uh, second ban coming up for Moto here. Um, And I wonder if they're worried about anything specific coming out from University of Houston. They're going to go ahead and ban the Kerrigan. Uh, Arthas picked up can be a good uh, deny pick. Uh, Arthas can be very good into Kerrigan. Uh, doesn't really get comboed super easily. Like once the combo hits and if Arthas survives, he can simply heal back up. Kerrigan, after she combos, can be very weak. So banning out the Kerrigan if that's something that they want to do because she has control over those shrines as well. So, second band coming up from University of Houston. Um, there's the gray main. Oh, no. It's right there. I wonder, I wonder if they're going to pick gray main Stukov. Not really giving a whole lot of information, although uh, Stukov may say that they may want to do something a little bit more divey. Stukov can, can definitely shut down uh, dives if he's... Uh, on point uh, turn off heroes that need to get up there and use a whole lot of abilities inside his team. Um, uh, flailing Swipe, also a very good disengage. Uh, therefore, Mudo. University of Houston really thinking about this uh, next ban, trying to figure out what they need to stop on the side of Mudo. Wondering if they're going to ban out a tank. They've already got a tank. Um, and we're going to see, they're going to go for the Malthael. Malthael probably beats Arthas in that solo lane. They're worried about, uh, really, his his damage can be really rough if they just try to run it down with Arthas. Lucio speed boosting everybody into the team. Uh, Malthael can uh, simply alt or just get a lot of damage off of people um, in that case. So, uh, worried about the Malthael. Although, with a Lucio... I'd be a little bit surprised if they picked the, the Malthael uh, into the Lucio. I've definitely seen it before. It's not impossible, uh, but some teams don't like to do it. So uh, that's an interesting 
band pick from University of Houston, and uh, I can't wait to see how that band pick works with the next two picks in their lineup. So next two picks coming out from Moto. Moto really thinking about it, making sure, because uh, this is this is going to define most of their team here. Going to give away the game, as it were. Maybe try not to give thing too away. Trying to figure out which which pick to hold for the last. And they're going to go with Lunara Leoric. So Lunara and Leoric here. Um, I don't know. I don't think that they're going to have Leoric as their main tank, and since uh, they've already got ETC Arthas, they're not really worried about losing that next tank pick, so Lunara Leoric, an uh, excellent choice there from them. Lunara going to offer a lot of damage and is able probably to stay mostly out of range of Arthas, dodge his roots a little bit more easy, easily, and she won't be as affected by Arthas's, uh, if, she, if she stays out of trouble, she won't be affected by Arthas's uh, attack speed slow. So really playing a game of chicken here with the University of Houston as Lucio's got that sound, bear, sound boost speed boost able to speed people in and get grab a hold of them lunar is going to have to to bounce around and make sure she doesn't get stuck too far in the she can get her damage out meanwhile the orc uh providing extra front line providing a good solo laner against the arthas and they're going to go ahead and grab the gul'dan excellent on shrines excellent wave clear which is uh something lucio and etc lack and the tychus i definitely see a lot of tychus lately um uh, he can go Odin to provide Siege and Counter Siege, or if he's part, they've, they're feeling that they particularly need to win a Shrine, he can go Laser and get the Laser down onto the point there. So, final pick here coming out for Moto. We're going to see if... I really doubt they're going to solo tank Leoric. They could surprise me. But uh, if they don't, they will at least need another front line. So let's see what they grab here. They're going to need somebody that can... Uh, Uh, you know, both head of the, excuse me, head of the Tychus, um, and isn't going to be too troubled by an Arthas just kind of sitting on top of him the entire time. So we're going to see how well this goes. Moto coming down to their last 10 seconds in this draft, wondering what they want to pick. And the timer hits zero, and they're going to go with the Muradin. So Muradin going to be their main tank here. Uh, I wonder if they were thinking between, like, the Diablo and the Muradin, because I definitely see a lot of Diablo on this map. And Diablo, you know, in Tomb Apoc could be a really strong combo. But instead, no, they're going to go for Muradin. Uh, going to offer a, a little bit, mm, I don't know about a little bit more CC, but definitely a different kind of CC than Diablo has to offer. Uh, Diablo has to often dive into the enemy team, and maybe uh, they don't want him in the Arthas's face quite as often. Uh, Muradin can also has, you know, a decent amount of uh, leap. He does sacrifice an escape to get into the enemy team. Uh, but we're going to see how Moto plays this. I'm going to be very interested to see how the uh, the Muradin goes. Be able to, to lock people down and really make sure that uh, Murden and Leora are going to give Lunara and Greymane plenty of space to poke people down. And Murden, uh sorry, Greymane uh, and Lunara have... Uh, we can have uh, uh, Greymane leap in on them. Uh, Lunara could always go Leaping Strike to avoid those roots, to avoid uh, ETC Mosh, to avoid... Uh, uh, avoid all kinds of uh, things. Avoid Horrify. Uh, the Lucio Sound Barrier, I think, is... is I think this is a good comp into that Lucio sound barrier because they're set up to kind of poke at them until that sound barrier gets out and uh, et cetera. So really it's going to be a question of whether Moto can stay alive in team fights uh, long enough in order to execute their plan. So here we go into the match. And on the side of heaven, we've got Moto. We've got Enigmatic on the Lunara. Strange Goat on the Leoric. Ooh, big taunt from Leo Lunara. Wait is on the Greymane. And Savo is on the Stukov with King Dingo on the Muradin. A lot of taunts coming out there. And on the side of hell, we've got the University of Houston with Kagi on the Arthas. Yatoila on the ETC. Logic on the Lucio. Waffle Copter on the Tychus. And... Mockery 
on the Ghoul Dan, and they're going to go ahead uh, and five man down middle. Uh, well, meanwhile, Moto sends up Lyric to just start up top. I'm not going to really force anything down here. Whoops. I'm going to bring it back mid here. Logic taking a good amount of damage, giving us the vanilla spray right there in that bush. The variant spray comes out. It's a battle of sprays right now. Meanwhile, the orc up there getting damage on the uh, these minions right now, getting into this bush. Kaki comes up and gets in the other bush. The ship's passing in the night. I don't think they realize that they're there. And they may just sit here in these bush and soak the entire time. Strange Goat had to have seen Kagi coming up there, of course. Unless he was outside of the bush at the wrong time. So, uh, uh, four people rotate down here. Not enough to really get at Lunar. I don't think they're going for her. Murden coming on an aggressive uh, path here, looking for some kind of uh, flanker. Big slide on the Murden. The Tychus damage comes out. The Q to follow the uh, Murden up and maybe get a kill. The Lucio auto attacks are enough, and King Dingo goes down. Meanwhile, we've got the rest of them over here. And they finally decide to say hello to each other, and this battle begins. Lunara over here throws out her wrist for vision, starts clearing down bottom. And they're going to go ahead. Uh, the University of Houston going to grab this camp immediately. Uh, scouts out, scouts it out, but that camp is grabbed already very quickly uh, at 124 right here. And, uh, nope. Cool. Dan damage is way too much for Lunara, and Lunara takes a lot of damage and backs off. Uh, tries to get the back in time, but dead deer walking. As King Dingo now caught in a bad place, gets that camp, but gives it away to University of Houston. University of Houston is really showing a lot of dominance in this early game, for sure. Um, they've got given up two camps here, and Bottom Soak is being completely missed. Uh, not well by both teams really, so they're not really losing out of too much. Meanwhile, Leoric doing pretty well up here uh, in the Soli, getting some spooky hands. Murden now killed over here. Uh, I looked away at the Soli for a little bit too long, and wow, Universe of Houston getting very, very aggressive on this front wall. Lunar is back, but now Murden is dead, so they've lost the front wall mid. It's a big uh, bonus here for. Uh, did I change the scene? I probably didn't. Oh my god. Nope, I didn't. Okay, University of Houston um, dives this tower. They've got, uh, looks like the shots are hitting Waffle Copter now. Uh, they're able to back out, but they get a good amount of damage on the sport before they have to back away. And the University of Houston really taking advantage of their early game comp here. Lunara taking a ton of damage, has to leap away. And it's looking really rough uh, for Motor right now. Although they do are at a structure disadvantage, they are only half a level away. Uh, so excellent. Uh, excellent uh, soaking there by Moto uh, to stay very close in this game, even though they've lost the entire front wall. Meanwhile, Moto's going to go send Greymane down here and get this. They're going to go ahead and poke and try to get a few of these skeletons, take them away from uh, University of Houston while they wait for Greymane to come back, getting this camp down bottom and putting some pressure, uh, very much needed pressure on this uh, on this bottom lane. So. They're going to go ahead and back off and wait for Greyman to come in. It looks like they got to, with the Ghoul Dan and uh, the Arthas, they're going to get these 40 skeletons very quickly. Not going to really have a chance uh, to handle that Punisher. Uh, but So they make a valiant effort on getting the uh, uh, skeletons for this Punisher, but no luck. And this Punisher is in an unlucky place as it's pushing down to this uh, lane that's already had its towers uh, taken down, and this fort's going to go down. This Punisher over here just zoning out uh, the entire team. While well, meanwhile, uh, you've got people in all the other lanes. They hit seven here. I'm going to go ahead and take a look here at Tom. So they finally bait the Punisher over the wall, and even some with the Arcan Punisher, some serious damage uh, along with this wave going down. And this tower may be done for. They may not be able to save this tower here. So middle keep wall goes down. Leora has to back off as they send uh, four up to rotate to your top. And let's see. Take a look at the builds here. Stukov going for the growing infestation. Q build her, uh, for the Lunara. And, uh, Grayman, rather. Uh, Lunara going for the Nimbo Wisp, the Perspective, and the Splinter Sphere. Not uh, very typical. Houston going to grab this camp with three people. Meanwhile, Arthas and uh, ETC up here. Arthas took a lot of damage, but he's able to get out just fine. Uh, Murden holding his seven talent for some reason. Uh, Leoric going for Neil Peasants and Consumed Vitality. 
and the, going for the extra uh, Drain Hope damage here. Uh, you know, ETC going for Prog Rock. Gul'dan going for the uh, Echoed Corruption quest, only at 15 stacks right now, but that's a decent amount. Uh, Arthas going for the uh, Root quest, even though he was in the Soul Lane. Murden realizes that he's surrounded by the rest of the team, jumps away, and Lunara hops away. Uh, Arthas' Root doesn't quite hit. Accelerana from Lucio. Uh, goes for the boombox as well. Press the advantage and into the rhythm for Tychus. Not really hitting any uh, minigun shots here just yet. Really only, only has eight out of, you know, uh, eight is not a lot of stacks. <laughs> is, is really all I uh, know how to say uh, at this point. But meanwhile, Moto Miracle only a half level behind at this point, despite having lost a fort. Uh, and I wish this interface would allow me to see. Oh, wait, I, I think I can actually. Yeah, here's uh, Leoric Spooky Ghost out of there. He gets caught. He gets taken a lot of damage. And really, Universe of Houston just pressing this middle lane very hard. While Tyke is soaked up top. Moto being forced to respond with five people. And like looking at the uh, experience, Moto is doing a very excellent job. They're keeping up uh, in experience by having 2,000 more minion damage compared to 2,000 more structure damage. And really, the difference here is the three kills uh, that University of Houston has. So... Uh, both teams very close to 10 at the moment. Uh, Leora comes up here. He's going to go ahead and soak this top lane. Uh, they grab their camp here. This shrine should be popping very shortly, but I have to imagine that uh, Moto's going to clear that shrine pretty quickly. But in the meantime, we're going to see what University does while that camp pushes. They're going to come down here and rotate, try and get a gank onto wait here on this Grammy. Here comes the root and the follow-up damage. He gets pushed off by a face mount and wait goes down. I don't know if they're going to be able to get enough counter damage. The orc is far away, and that's going to be another gank. That's going to get them 10, but uh, Moto is not far behind. Uh, and Talents, ETC takes Mosh Pit. Gul'dan holding? Yeah, no, I don't think so, Gul'dan. Uh, he grabs Horrify. Uh, Arthas holding his Talent. Wondering if we're going to go Cinder Ghost. I think they may, actually, based on whether they win this Shrine or not, Arthas may decide to pick uh, Army if he needs it. Uh, Sound Bear, and there's the drill. Tychus really doubling down on this uh, point here, which makes me think Arthas holding his Cinder Ghost if, if in case... Uh, Laser can, in fact, get that value. Big damage on the Leoric, who's spooky goes out. They're going to grab this front wall before the shrine even starts. Uh, this camp, not cleared quite yet, uh, but it's now destroyed, and they start the shrine. Let's look at the 10s out from Moto. Moto going for uh, March of the Black King. Definitely a lot of targets, um, especially with Arthas in your face. You're going to have plenty of to uh, march in there. Avatar. Uh, there it is, the Leaping Strike, as I talked about during the draft, and the Curse Bullet coming out from the Grimmie, along with the Lang Swipe from Stukov. Uh, meanwhile, this camp was gotten here down by Moto, meaning Gul'dan has to go down and clear it, meaning that uh, and they're not going to be able to clear the Skeletons quite as fast. They've only got 16, and Moto is here pushing them off. They realize Gul'dan is down uh, bottom, and they go ahead and get on that Shrine and start it, and they're going to want to... Uh, you know, this is definitely a fight that they want to take if they can get a good position to get to engage on. Lunara up here getting on skeletons. They're going to be even on skeletons by the time we then right. Here's a big slide onto the Leoric. Leoric is going to get a ton of poison damage. He's going to try and get it away. He gets it back with the March of the Black King. Here comes the laser, and here's the Mosh Pit. Sound Barrier comes out and saves him for now. But here's the big fear, and it fears King Dingo right into the enemy team. He pops that guard just in time. Everyone is still alive. There's a huge splash. It gets Lucio dangerous low. Stukov, though, trying to silence, caught out with his arm in the ground, and it's a one for nothing in favor of University of Houston. They push them off this point, and they're going to take this top punisher. Meanwhile, they come down here. Uh, Moto comes to soak up what they can. Stukov will be back very shortly to defend this punisher, but Arthas uh, did, in fact, uh, grab Army of the Dead. No, uh, just maybe put a little fear of the Cinder Ghost in them, even though they did win this Punisher, he's not going for, uh, uh, he's not going to really push this, uh, too much, and they're going to go ahead and get this fort, the Punisher zones everybody out, these minions are there, they're going to be able to just clear this fort up really quickly, uh, they put a whole bunch of damage on this Punisher, just, uh, four of them, meanwhile, Grimman is bottom, uh, they're clearing up this mid camp, making sure they don't lose too much on this wall. Uh, somebody seems to have written something out in all chat. I don't quite understand what this is. Maybe it's some mind game. Oh, <laughs> a little joke about uh, their camp, I see. So, uh, a little bit of fun coming out there from Waffle Copter. Uh, we got five of them on this, uh, three of them on this camp. Uh, Leoric is going to come down here and soak. 
uh, Murden is going to anchor in this bush here. Meanwhile, uh, University of Houston grabs this uh, Khazra camp here and invades there, and that's their right as they've got 13. Let's go ahead and check out any interesting 13 towers. Gul'dan's still holding us for some reason. Encore! Uh, I haven't seen this one in a while. I haven't actually seen what ATC has been going in HTC, but Shatter Armor uh, works really well with the Frost Presence. Uh, back in the mix, uh, looking for the uh, Silence uh, Heal Boost there, and Spray and Prey coming out for Tychus as well. So the big Silence coming out there from Stukov as Lyric throws his hand out. Nothing really much going to happen. It's 4v4, uh, 5v4. They're not going to engage. They don't know if they realize that Tychus is not with them at all. 13 to 13. Looks like Moda's going to posture up to grab this camp. Lunara doesn't start it. In fact, she stays in this bush. Gets a whole ton of damage. Out of Logic. Logic has to pop the sound barrier, but that damage is going, is humming on them very quickly. They're going to escape, but they've got a ton of damage, and they could try to dive this fort. In fact, they do. Arthas goes down very quickly. Here comes the fear to disengage. The mosh pit goes on to white. And wait is in, it's immediately dis uh, interrupted, and they back off. They get one kill for nothing. A huge amount of damage coming out from Lunara. They're enigmatic. Uh, doing very well. King Diego coming out. They grab this camp. ETC tries to slide in and tries to steal the camp. Uh, are they going to punish him for this? The huge amount of damage going on to ETC. I don't know if ETC can get out in time. He comes out. Leora comes back to slow him, and ETC... Getting a little uh, greedy there for that camp, thinking he could uh, uh, get some damage from Gul'dan or just, you know, get out and, like, force them to get on that camp. And instead, now that they've killed someone, they're going to go ahead and push onto the support and really make something else. Laser comes down to defend this push, but the leaping strike from Lunar, the laser is on uh, King Dingo right now. I believe it was on weight taking a lot of damage, but Lunara absolutely free to jump around, and she does get the Gul'dan pick, and they get a fort and a kill uh, off snowballing off of that kill from ETC. So excellent job from them uh, coming out. So this fort goes down, and they clear a whole bunch of these waves, and it looks like they're going to wait in this bush here and make sure that uh, uh, Moto don't do something crazy. They check the uh, camp to make sure they're not doing it. Moto, in fact, backs off. They don't aren't interested in invading this camp as Gul'dan can come back too quickly. And they don't want, maybe they don't want to spend any more alts and want to save their alts for the shrine. Mur Murden getting vision onto the shrine. Meanwhile, the team of University of Houston starts this camp. ETC scouting on this bush, checking things out. Murden running around. They go and grab this uh, Kasha camp, no problem. Uh, rest of Moto's up here clearing the mid. Uh, they start the shrine here on the side of University of Houston, and Moto backs out, and they're going to regroup their team and possibly go in Strange Goat. Looking at the flank here uh, on the arc, Lunara throws some vision into this bush here and try and get uh, uh, into a flank position. Uh, Splendor Sphere comes out, getting plenty of poke damage onto the University of Houston, who has to back out at 23 skeletons. Uh, Stukov is going to throw his silence out there. That silence is going to grow to fill the entire corridor in here, so they're going to have a tough time coming in from the right from here. Arthas decides that maybe is getting silence, not worth walking in there, and Moto is going to start racking up these skeletons. Tychus clears the mid. Meanwhile, a big slide into King Dingo has to pop. Avatar gets uh, CC'd. He's going to be able to walk out. A huge amount of heal comes up, but the damage comes up. There's the mosh onto two, uh, onto one person. Uh, but Greymane trying to focus the mosh target dies. It gets focused by the rest of the team. But ETC goes down, so now it's a one for one. And Lunara, the Lunara damage is so much for the Lucio. I don't know if he's going to be able to heal it back up. Uh, Leor gets real low, but he's able to uh, spooky skeleton out. And yes, in fact, Lucio. The Miracle Worker, I mean, his 16 amp it up is huge. He's able to survive that poison damage, and that's what's uh, really rough about playing in uh, Lunara into a healer like Lucio. So now it's a one for one. They're going to come back in here. A huge amount of damage comes here from Lunara. Leaping Strike onto Waffle Copter. Tyke is putting a ton of damage onto Leoric. Sprays and prays, but instead goes down, and that's Kagi looking really rough. Uh, he's out of mana, and there goes University of Houston, going to give up one for nothing uh, in that 4v4 as their other respective members come back. Gramian's going to go back in the middle and clear this. Moto's going to finish up these skeletons. They're going to grab this camp, and they're going to have a Punisher, a uh, Mortar Punisher, pushing onto this cape. Meanwhile, they... Uh, University of Houston takes the time to come up here and get this uh, Shaman Camp. Moto's not going to grab there, so that Shaman Camp's going to be pushing uncontested onto their keep. But meanwhile, the Punisher is bearing down on this wall here. 
Okay, Punisher, nobody here to quite jump it over yet. This Punisher gonna just start punching this front wall. There he goes. There's a splash. Gonna jump onto two people in the back. They kill the side wall. King Dingo comes down, gets the stun onto two people. Nothing much really happening there. They're gonna go ahead and clear up these towers. Leora gonna spooky ghost. I believe he went the spia. Yeah, he definitely went the Wraith Walk talents. He's gonna lower everybody's damage for four seconds. The Punisher jumps onto one in the back, and this uh, keep is gonna be dead as it taking a long time, <coughs> excuse me, for the University of Houston to kill the Punisher. The Punisher finally goes down. Lunara Poison is gonna finish off this fort. And meanwhile, Leoric uh, uses his Wraith Walk to get away. They're gonna go and clean up this uh, wave here. And Stubov tries to disengage, but the Flame Swipe is off. But a huge amount of damage comes out uh, from Lunara. But meanwhile, Gul'dan gets a ton of damage under the Stukov. Lucio is about to die. A Leaping Strike finishes off. Meanwhile, Greyman in the back is going to go down. But Tychus as well starts to go down. The laser on Enigmatic in the back is uh, really rough. But uh, the Leoric putting a ton of uh, Wraithlock just taking away all their damage here. The uh, ETC Mosh doesn't hit anybody, and they walk away. It's a two for two. It feels bad banned from the ETC as he realizes his Mosh didn't happen as well. And, and this camp pushing uncontested onto this keep has gotten a keep, half of the keep wall here. I don't know if they're going to be able to actually be able to save this tower. Yeah, this tower's... He decides to use Leaping Strike to kill the Shaman quickly. The tower not saved. They're going to grab this Kaiser camp to push against the one, uh, the singular Kaza left from Moto, and they're going to go ahead and grab this other one bot while Moto grabs their uh, bruiser camp up in the top here. That's feels bad, man, from Lunara, is uh, kites these uh, this camp a little bit back too far, and they have to restart the thing over again. Not a really big deal, it's just a just an annoying thing that probably happened to them. And meanwhile, they've got two camps pushing on these two lanes, and they're threatening this fort here. They want to force a fight here, and then maybe taking this fort is the way that the uh, University of Houston gets a fight before uh, Moto comes back. And then look at that experience uh, here. Moto just absolutely out soaking um, uh University of Houston is really the difference in this game because they're going to get the 21st. They've got the structure advantage, but the keep uh, and the, I mean, the structure XP is actually on the side of University of, of Houston. You might not expect that, even though considering they've lost the keep, but they still have two forts and two keeps remaining. So uh, Moto m moving this uh, map really well. Uh, and I believe a huge amount of uh, Gul'dan corruption damage goes out onto Lunara. She has to back up and tap. Meanwhile, the Auric is so here soaking 20, and you have to believe that they're going to go in as soon as they get 20. In fact, yeah, Universe if you didn't realize this, Murden jumps in, looks for a stun onto somebody, trying to get this Gul'dan, who's lagging a little bit. Uh, I, b I believe he may have used Rewind there. Uh, in fact, I believe he did. Yeah, he uses Rewind to jump and try to get the stun onto Gul'dan. It's not enough to get the pick, and they're going to just go ahead and get this camp before they go up top and the University of Houston has to deal with this camp and has to deal with getting to 20 uh, at the same time so 20 advantage for Moto going in here and let's look at these storm talent advantages uh, going for the, the singular swipe the hunter's blunderbuss the extra leap stuff and the oh going for the death march I like this talent a lot I don't see it taken very often but if you can get that black uh, black king's march onto a bunch of people all those drain hopes are super cool to have so Moto grabbing this uh, shrine getting 10 skeletons right off the bat they're going to be able to clear this up uh, Houston versus Houston not really even bothering to do this uh, this camp is up they're not going to bother to take it they're going to rotate up here from bottom they think they can get 20 here just before this Punisher comes out uh, they're so so close this wave is going to get them there they go ahead and grab their storm talents and let's show them on the screen here while this fight starts Lura comes in and uh, lowers everybody's damage uh, and meanwhile, Lunara is up here still getting these skeletons in a bit of a precarious position, but she does the leaving strike, but not when you're stunned. Uh, Enigmatic gets stunned by ETC and it goes down. And here's a quick bolt mosh onto the Grey Mane. Here's the swipe to immediately cancel it and disengage here. But that Lunara's uh, stun. First bolt comes out and gets a lot of damage onto the ETC. Uh, Sound Barrier comes out and gets everyone but ETC, but the Stukov stuck in no man's land trying to silence everybody, and that's two for nothing. A huge fight there coming in from University of Houston. Only two skeletons remain in that uh, for the Punisher, and I wonder, I have to wonder, the calculation here is, are those two skeletons worth it to send somebody in there and try and get them? Maybe send Leoric in uh, to try and get uh, big skeletal swings onto those 
two skeletons uh, bef so that the Punisher can at least not be pushing onto the keep. They are going to posture up here. The Orc is going to skeleton in. He's going to come in. He's looking for that Q. Only gets one, and there's the Black King March. He's probably going to get there. He gets a skeleton, and he's going to survive because of that Black King's March. Big Curse Bullet goes on to your toilet, but he ATC is going to be just fine. And this Punisher is going to go over to Moto just in time for uh, Lunar to come back. And Stugum's probably going to be able to come back in time enough to have some kind of impact. They're going to grab this camp. Moto not really being able to uh, challenge it. Uh, Leoric's going to get some damage reduction on them so that camp goes down a little fat, a little slower. But never mind, it's going to be picked up. Uh, Punisher's going to jump on them outside here. They're going to start burning this thing down. And Moto trying to look for an angle for this engage. Uh, King Dingo comes against the Shaman. Moto's going to rip down that Shaman as the Punisher pushes onto this uh, uh, while Stukov, meanwhile, was trying to get some wave clear in middle, so that wave is not horrible. But a huge amount of Lunar damage goes on to Kagi and Logic. Arthas and uh, Leoric are looking real low. The fear for disengage so they can back up off as this Punisher starts going in. Leoric is going in there, and he is just absolutely indestructible, immediately leaving Lunara and Greyman to do a bunch of splash damage. And Lunara gets her poison damage in, almost kills the Arthas, kills the Lucio, and that is a huge gain uh, for Moto. Big, oh, damage on the top. Tychus, Tychus caught way too far. Leaping strike over the fort. Another leaping strike on the ETC. And ETC goes down. Lunara has to hop around looking for the big kill. On to the uh, Greymane. is going to tr try to trade out, but uh, I believe uh, he may have popped a Hellstone. Yeah, he popped his Hellstone, uh, but it's not going to be enough. They're going to get a whole ton of damage onto this core. King Dingo uh, is looking very healthy. Savo looking very healthy. Wait. Greymane on this core is going to do a ton of damage. I don't know if they're going to be able to finish it. They're looking real close. Oh, but there's the big heal from Stukov, and that is GG. So an excellent final engage there by Moto, doing really good poke, and then doing an excellent job of snowballing that poke on uh, into a win there in a final push. An excellent game there. Uh, and there you have that one. So... Uh, the next map that we are going to is going to be Towers of Doom, and this is going to be the map pick of University of Houston. So let me go ahead and get that uh, game created and start inviting everybody to it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, they're going to talk a lot, too. Uh, there's, like... Uh, it makes me yawn a little bit more. I'm not sure why. Let me go ahead and set this to that. Okay, I'm waiting for another team to get in here. Um, sorry, just hold on a second. I'm going to get a sip of water. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I think we are getting the other team in here. There we go. And this is going to be, let's see, we're going to see if uh, University of Houston definitely put up a very strong early game. Moto Miracle finally able to pull it together and winning a huge team fight at the end to bring the victory to them. We're going to see if uh, on their map pick, University of Houston can bring it back here on Towers of Doom. And we're just waiting for the rest of the team to come in. We're going to get everybody set up here. Oh, my God. And that was a, a really killer match. Very fun to watch. Okay, we're getting everybody in here. And yeah, you saw that Leoric is such a strong late game presence, and 
<laughs> really, with that, that March of the Black King upgrade, he was really able to force himself onto that point and make sure that Punisher was indeed theirs. Okay, we're going to have a small break as teams kind of take a uh, quick break here. It is also pretty late. It is almost midnight my time, so there is also that. And, yeah, and I have to wonder uh, what... Uh, Houston is in store for. All right, and I do have the Mark Moto's score here. I should really have Moto's score on this screen here. Oh well. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right, and uh, just to explain to chat, uh, best of two doesn't really make sense but uh, to say best of. Uh, but the uh, entire reason that there's two matches is so that no team... Uh, I think it's good because it's good for round robins. Um, the way NGS scores is during the season, uh, in each match, a 2-0 will get you three points, a 1-1 one one will get you one point, and a loss will get you no points. Uh, so what it does is it gives you an incentive to win as many games as possible, whereas a best of three, you just give it to the winner. A two and one is the same as a two and oh. And it doesn't give a team any real strong advantage uh, if they're like the home team or if they get first map pick and such, uh, because you uh, you have the same number of, of, you have an even number of games. So each team is able to have map pick and first hero pick. So... Uh, we are, it's, it's very much like soccer group stages. And then when we play playoffs, we're going to have best of threes and best of five. So, uh, I think it's a, a, a very good system. So, uh, and it, the, the other great thing about two games is that it keeps match times very short as the, uh, even the best of two can go for an hour and a half, especially if players need to take a small break in between matches here. So, uh, that's that. And... I think um, I hope people watching actually uh, are learning. If there's anybody out there that doesn't know what NGS is, it's Nexus Gaming Series. You can check it out at nexusgamingseries.com. It's a fantastic league, uh, and it's easily like um, uh, it's an amazing amateur scene. Uh, we've got people from Grandmaster to Bronze among uh, spread among five divisions. Uh, you got 60 teams total. Uh, and there's basically hots every day of the week with uh, people doing amateur casts like myself for these teams. So they, they get a a good cast in the thing. Okay, all right. Um, okay, great. And the teams are ready, and we are going to go into Infernal Shrines. I said Infernal Shrines. I'm an idiot. We're going into Towers of Doom. Why did I say that? I said it, and I still thought... I was saying something like Towers of Doom, but I'm not. Okay, so. This is University of Houston's map pick, so we're going to see what Moto has to offer on this map as well. And I'm very excited to see what University of Houston's plan is for this map. If they're going to stick with the meta bans and picks, or if they're going to go something entirely their own. So, Moto, first ban. I always expect this to be a Genji. I didn't mean you on there, but really it's, <laughs> yeah, you know, with all these competitive games, it can get kind of uh, a tie for, you know, Genji, Hanzo, Greyman, ETC, Lucio. Um, but that's, you know, that's very often the nature of competitive play is that you find a few heroes that you really like and you stick with them uh, because it offers you something. Uh, if both, it, it's almost a gen, it can almost be a gentleman's agreement sometimes. And you see this a lot in Dota where both teams just kind of end up picking this out of the same hero pool and it offers you something very um, predictable on your side if you know kind of the heroes that you're angling for and what your enemy is going for. So um, the, the Haka being banned out. 
uh, they don't want to deal with the global, so no Genji ban here. So uh, you could probably see them going for a Falstead or maybe even a Brightwing. Or po I've seen an Illidan on this map too, and it worked out real well. So um, uh, a lot of options to them. And the uh, University of Houston, what do you want to ban out? I wonder if they're going to ban the Genji uh, this time, or if they're going to go ahead and uh, ban something else. Uh, you know, if, if you're worried about your en enemy has a very, very strong Genji, then Genji can definitely ruin your day, especially uh, if he gets a really good Dragon Blade into your entire team. So running down to the wire here on the second ban um, here, and they're going to go ahead and ban that ETC right off the bat. Get that tank off the board, ETC, the uh, most sort of generic and also strong tank out there right now, and so he gets banned out. The next pick coming up from Moto. Uh, we go in for the first pan first pick up here for Moto. We're gonna see what they go for. Genji and uh, both the Shimada brothers are on the table if they really want to grab one of them, but it is uh, Towers of Doom, so we're gonna see what they go with here. You could always see um, any kind of pick here. Moto using most of their time to think about their... And they're gonna go ahead and grab the Hanzo first, and there's some talk in here, uh, this is, this is two minutes ago, but there's some talk in here about somehow a prisoner's dilemma. I don't quite understand uh, what you're getting at. Um, Yeah, I think that's just weird talk. Anyways, uh, moving on from weird stuff being said in chat. Hopefully I'm not destroying my green screen setup here by moving too much here. Uh, the first two picks for University of Houston. Um, Genji, hey, if you want to play that Genji yourself, it's still on the board. And um, I've heard people say it's like a counter to Hanzo. Uh, but we're going to see what they go ahead and go with here. 20 seconds remain, really thinking about this pick as well. Hanzo just says, uh, Hanzo very good here. Uh, they can, it can, he can go get camps. Camps are very important on this map. And then they go for the Lucio Greyman here. So Lucio Greyman, a very solid pick of both of those two, uh, very often being taken uh, together. And these next two picks, this pick, I find that this um, this turn here is uh, very the the most complicated part of the first picking team's draft because they not only have to pick their two heroes here, they have to wonder what uh, they've got two more bands uh, in the way, and they have to worry about what the next two picks are for uh, the other team. So. There's a lot of calculation thinking, what do we grab now, and what's going to be absolutely gone by the next time we get a ban. So, Moto is thinking about their options. Genji's still on the table, but Hanji Genzo, uh, Han, Hanji, Hanji, oh my god, Hanzo Genji, not uh, the best synergy in the world of grabbing both of them. So, they grab the Stukov, they do enjoy that Stukov, and they grab the Arthas to shut the Greymane down. Uh, not shut him down, but, you know, he does he does provide an impediment to the Arthas. So, or not, he does, Arthas provides an impediment to the Grey Main attack speed. So, ban coming out here for University of Houston. They've already got their main support, uh, but another support here taken away, uh, or picked up, rather, by Moto. I'm wondering what you grab here. I, I'm not sure what you ban out here. Possibly another global because you, they have the Dahaka banned immediately. Um, they still probably could use a, another tank. I don't know if I see Arthas being a solo tank, especially if you grab um, 
the right kind of heroes to go against him. They ban out the Lunara. She was definitely a pain uh, in the previous match, and uh, they could be trying to go Uther here um, as well to support that Greyman, or maybe they could grab Uther Genji as well. Okay, that's still on the table. Divine Dragon Blade is still very powerful uh, and can rip up Hanzo, uh, and it can it can mess up Stukov if uh, Genji is careful to avoid his silence. So. Possibly a respect ban here, possibly also another ban uh, for the thing. And they go ahead and ban out the Genji. So saying... Uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like we got some respect ban chat going on here in the channel. Uh, and they go ahead and ban the Genji here because Uther Genji is definitely... Genji's still very powerful even if it uh, doesn't really... Uh, even if they weren't eager to grab him right off the bat. So, the next two picks rounding out the comp for University of Houston here. Uh, I'm not sure what they grab here. They still need a tank. And, you know... I think you grab your your tank and uh, some kind of burst DPS here. Uh, but I'm not sure what they... Lucio Graming, like, they could go so many different directions. Lucio Graming so generic uh, at the point here. So they're going to come down to the wire, and they're going to grab the Muradin for the tank, and they're going to grab the Mouth Ale. They commit to uh, their solo laner. Uh, not that strange of a pick... Uh, considering Arthas is probably their solo laner, so um, not really uh, looking there. So Malphael grabs grabbed here by University of Houston and can go really well into the Arthas. And, and considering that Arthas is probably not going to be the solo warrior, can be you know really instrumental in getting into those health pools. Um, Arthas is going to want to run it down at Malphael. Malphael can use his uh, uh, has a good kit for handling that. So, we're going to see what the last two picks are here for Moto. I'm going to come down to the wire here. The intense music leading to the tension here of the final picks for Moto coming down, making sure they really want these last two picks. We hit zero on the clock, and it's going to be Diablo! And Li Ming. So Diablo looking to flip people around. Just have a ball with uh, the rest of that. And Hanzo Li Ming providing plenty of damage while uh, the Arthas and the Stukov can lock people down. So uh, a very solid draft coming out here from Mudo. And the final pick to round out the University of Houston's comp is coming now. And University of Houston is going to want uh, some... Burst damage in a way, like, they've got the Mouth Ale, which can really eat into Diablo's health pool, as well as uh, Arthas. So they're going to want a, a good amount of burst here. They've already got Greymane, too, to burst down the Diablo and the Arthas. So they're going to want a way to finish people off. It's too bad Li Ping and Genji are now off the board. The reset characters uh, and uh, not available to them. And you want Greymane probably on that Cursed Bullet. So I'm really thinking what they want to do here. I could see a Chromie here for sure. Uh, although Chromie can be rough. It could be rough if Diablo gets onto Chromie, but there she is. Uh, I do like the Chromie here. And we're going to do enter the map. Uh, the character swap a portion of it and Looking at these comps, yeah, it's really going to be about um, if Murden can just get that. They're going to be able to focus the tanks of, of Arthas and Diablo. Grammy's going to be able to curse bullet, and Malthale's going to get uh, a lot of damage on there. And really, it's going to be whether they can um, kill somebody quick enough to avoid getting uh, murdered by Hanzo and Li Ming, even though. They're, Chromie's going to want to, you know, poke people out, and it's really going to be about timing here 
for uh, the side of University of Houston. Meanwhile, on the side of Moto, uh, Diablo and Arthas. Arthas is looking to just run it down. And uh, it's the same thing as, as last game. Give uh, the DPS time to focus on who they need to without having to worry about dying themselves. And hopefully Li Ming, uh, if you're Moto, hopefully Ming gets those resets and just bursts down. So... Um, Again, they're going to be able to probably like wait through Sound Barrier with the sustain <coughs> heal of Stukov. So I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm going to switch this scene. For if I can control my 